A warm welcome to everybody joining us in this webinar on how to apply to the University of Olu. I'm Gohar Shad and I have the pleasure of being your host today. I'm also joined by Emma and while we are going through application process, she will offer valuable insights. Hi and welcome Emma. Can you please introduce yourself for the audience? Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Emma Pihlajama and I'm a solution designer here at the University of Oulu and in uh, admissions and specifically speaking uh, English speaking programs admissions. Welcome again. Thank you. Mm, when it comes to application process, uh, a study info website has a huge role to play. Can you please share about the website? Yes, um, study info has uh, a lot of information about all the programs. It has all of their admissions criteria and study info is a national system or a national page where uh, applicants can not only find information about the programs, but for University of Oulu, they also apply uh, on study info web page. It's not the same in all universities in Finland. Some of them have their own application uh, pages, but we use study info for all of our applications as well. Good to know, and I think applicants must be friends with a study yes, info it's, during it's the Yes, it's one of their best friends, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and as University of Oulu is offering many, many different uh, degree programs, I believe that it's a good start point to explore different programs and see what are the eligibility criteria. What's your thought on this? Yeah, I think both study info and our own uh, web pages are very good for these. Study info has the more exact admissions criteria for each program. And then our own how to apply web pages have information on eligibility and all the documents you need to have and all of that. So I would recommend to make good friends with both of these pages. Yeah. And speaking of eligibility, who can apply to the University of Oulu overall? Yeah, well, that's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, let's look at the master's studies first. Um, when you apply to our master's programs, uh, you need to have a bachelor's degree or equivalent. It can be called something else, but it has to be three years full full time studies. And it has to give you eligibility for master's studies in your own country of education. Mm -hmm. And if you're in your last term of studies, uh, you can also apply to us as long as you graduate then on time in the summer. And then bachelor studies, uh, you also need to have a secondary education or equivalent. This usually means high school studies or higher secondary um, degree. And just like with master studies, uh, this degree has to give you eligibility to bachelor's level studies in your own country of education. That's what we look at first and foremost. And once again, if you're in your uh, last term, you are also eligible to apply. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, is there any differences while applying with Finnish qualifications or non-Finnish qualifications? There are some. Uh, not a lot of big differences, but there are some that maybe you should be uh, mindful of. And uh, because we get verified results of all Finnish degrees, almost all Finnish degrees from a national system. This means that, you know, if you apply with a Finnish degree, you don't necessarily have to send us verified copies uh, according to our instructions. But if your degrees are completed elsewhere, then you, first of all, first and foremost, you have to have your educational documents verified after you've been accepted, because we don't get this information information from any national system. So we need to make sure that these are your documents and for the degree you have uh, given us on your application. And another thing that may, may come around is that your documents, uh, if they're not in English, Swedish or Finnish, uh, they have to be officially translated. And by officially translated, it means that you cannot translate them yourselves. But there are instructions on our web page about that as well. Yeah, good that you mentioned again about mm. the web page because it's good to yeah. check everything on the yeah, website. Yeah, everything this, yeah. should be there. Yeah. yeah, perfect. And speaking from experience, I know that organizing and submitting documents are crucial to have a smooth application process. Uh, where can applicants find needed documents? Uh, well, you should see our web page for information. We have a whole uh, web page dedicated to the documents that you need to have at hand when you apply. And you should uh, 
start the process early. You should start now if you already know that you're applying. But also all the information on the attachments you need is in study info. And you should check the uh, admissions criteria really carefully because that sort of that tells you which attachments to have and for which program as well. And also when you uh, fill in the application, it sort of it tells you what to do and what to fill in and which attachments to put where. So you can sort of you can trust the application as well. But as the applications are not open yet at this point, our web page and the admissions criteria in study info are your uh, main locations to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and. I'm curious if there is any mutual criteria or documents between different programs. Uh, sometimes yes, but you should not trust that. <laughs> and different programs have big variation on what they have. Some programs could use the same tests, etc. But usually you just need to check the criteria for each program and each year. Even if you applied to one of our programs last year, they might have uh, new criteria and new attachments that you need or new tests or mm -hmm. something like this. So you should always check the admissions criteria for that. Mm -hmm. You already mentioned that application period is not started yet, but mm -hmm. let's talk it in more detail. When is the application timeline? Yeah, well, it's it's pretty soon, actually. Uh, the next uh, application period is in January, uh, January 8th to the January uh, 22nd, uh, to be exact. So that though it's quite quite a small time frame, but it's it's a national deadline. So it's the same for everybody. So that's when you need to have uh, everything ready and attached and be ready to apply for us. And it's quite soon. It's yeah, quite soon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Only a few months left. Yeah, and we know that uh, international degree programs are taught in English in mm. the University of Oulu. And um, I have the question if applicants need to show their English proficiency as well while they're applying. Yeah, yeah. All applicants need to uh, prove their language skills. Uh, luckily for them, there are so many ways to do that. And you only need to pick one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, but the requirements you can find on our web page. And um, this is just... Uh, it's very important to note that if you do not prove your language skills uh, during the application period, your application will not go forward. So you cannot be selected. So this is one of the most important things to th think about. Mm -hmm. And uh, just uh, one a piece of advice is that if you are going to use a language test as a proof of your language skills, you should book a uh, right now to do your language test because it might take a few weeks to get to the test and then it might take a few weeks to get the result and we only accept the final official results we don't accept uh, an email that gives you your results or anything it has to be the final official paper that says that these are your results thank you it's a really useful tip and practical yeah. point to keep in mind yeah. um, is there any other common documents that you would like to mention now uh, well, yeah, there there are quite a lot of uh, common documents that everybody has to have. And I, once again, I recommend that you go to study info to see the documents and you go to our web page uh, to see the documents. And actually, we can see them here. Um, everybody has to attach, first and foremost, proof of language skills, a copy of their transcript of records, and if they've graduated already, a copy of their degree certificate. And we also request that you attach a copy of your passport or identity card. And one important thing is that if you uh, do not need to pay tuition fees and you select this, you have to prove that you don't have to pay tuition fees and attach a document that uh, proves this. Otherwise, we will have to assume that you are uh, liable to pay tuition fees. And the last one being uh, official translations, like I mentioned earlier, unless your degree, uh, you know, degree documents are in Finnish, English or Swedish. So those are the common documents for everyone. Mm -hmm. And there is a kind of long list of documents and um, it arises the question of 
What if someone misses the deadline for submitting required documents? Well, obviously, uh, you attach them all on time because you're here. Uh, and that shows how important it is. To be fair to everybody, we have to only accept the documents that come to us uh, within the given deadlines. So we, we do not accept documents before or after the deadlines we have set. And this is very important. And I really hope everybody remembers this. Yeah, and it is really understandable because you need to be fair to yeah. everybody. Yeah, that's the most important thing, I think. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's move on. When applicants have completed their application by submitting all required documents in time, what's the expected time for them to hear about their results? Yeah, that's the exciting time. Um, for bachelor's programs, they can expect to hear from us, uh, hear the final results in May. And for master's programs, uh, they can expect to hear from us with the final results in April. Perfect. Um, and uh, I know that some applicants are concerned if some um, criteria are affecting their results, like applying for scholarships or applying for different degree programs at the same time. So are these facts or just some? <laughs> these are rumors that we hear almost yeah. every year. Somebody asks like, will it make it di more difficult for me to get in if I apply for a scholarship? No, definitely not. And will it affect my chances of getting in if I apply to say four, five or six programs? You can apply for a maximum of six programs in the application round altogether. But no, it does not affect your possibilities of getting in at all. These, uh, both, both of these things are completely uh, unattached. They don't have any connection to each other. So you can very freely apply to as many programs as you wish, maximum of six, and you can apply for a scholarship, definitely. Very good to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, when the magic starts, when's mm -hmm. the expected date for studies to begin? Uh, I think this slightly depends on the program uh, you will get into, but uh, roughly speaking, orientation week and the first day of studies is usually at the end of August next year. Mm -hmm. So I may can wrap up for our viewers like this, that in a nutshell, please read the criteria and learn about what you need exactly for your application. Then fill the form in the January and submit all the required documents in time. Don't forget to accept your study place in time as well. Thank you, Emma, for being here and sharing all this detailed information and practical. Um, thank you a lot. Thanks, my pleasure. <laughs> And thank you for viewing this video. All the best with your application process.